Okay, now I'm back again. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so right here at this joint where my paper is at, I'm going to peel off the backing, and then I'm going to take glossy accents, and I'm going to put it, a bead of it inside there because it'll dry, and it'll reinforce that seam right there. Okay, and then we're just going to take this and fold it over. There. Just like that. I'm going to squish it out. Keep off the wet one hand. At least I keep my package handy when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Okay. So that's that. And we're basically going to do that on all of this, on all of the edges. Okay. Same with this one. I'm going to take and put the inside one on there first. So this one is going to come up. And I'm going to line these up together and stick this down. And I'm going to kind of push it in down here at the bottom to make sure it's lined up where it needs to be. So that when I stick down my paper inside there, it's straight. There. Okay, then I'm going to take again this edge, this, if I can, how can I get this up there so you can see it right there. Right in there. So right here is where we're going to put the glossy accents. Run a bead of it down there again. And like I say, it's mainly just to hold it so that it stays nice and sturdy. And then wrap it around and stick it down. There we go. Now my dog's going to bark. Bernard, no. Stop. Go lay down. Go on. Okay. Get that off my hands. Okay, so there's that side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to repeat to the other side. But before I do the other side, I actually need to replace this one that I tore out of there because it wasn't going right. So I'm going to cut this, fold it backwards, I'm going to angle my pieces on the end. Why am I not in the camera very well at all? Okay, so I have to get this I have to get this piece in here is what I'm doing. So we're gonna take and put this in here. And I know you can't see this because I'm on the inside of the box. I have to fold it backwards. Peel off the paper. And this one, I might as well do them both at the same time because it would be easier that way. Peel off the paper off this side too. So both of these are going to, and I don't want this piece here to do it. So we're going to match these up here at the top. And then and again, I know you can't see it, but I'm going to come down here, kind of push it in a little bit there. And then we have to move over to this side and do the same thing. So we have to match that up. There. Okay. And again, I know you didn't see that really well, but I showed you on the other side. Okay. So see, now we have our pieces together here. Again, we're going to pull this off. And we're going to put glossy accents in here, right into that seam. And we're going to fold this over. And there it goes, coming out underneath again. Now, I hope this side sticks okay. So we're going to again do this glossy accents in the seam. 
And then we're going to fold this over. And the glossy accents really does make a difference. You can skip it. You don't have to do it. I just find that it really does make a difference in how sturdy it'll be in the end. That was a tip I picked up from um, Jim the Gentleman Crafter. That's where that tip came from. And it was a well good, yeah, I've used it, I use it all the time anymore. So now we're left with these raw edges. And we're going to do the same thing with that. We're just going to take the pieces that we have to put there. So we have two that go across the edge on the bottom. So we want two of those. And we have two, we actually should have four. I didn't cut enough, did I? Let's see. One, two. We're going to need four, or two across the bottom. That's these two. We already did the four on the side, so that's all we're left with. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm not going to angle these little pieces that go across this bottom here. I'm going to leave them straight like this and put them on. And then these are going to come by and cover them up. So let's do the glossy accents. And then let's go ahead. There. There's one there. Across the bottom here. And I know I'm still not in the camera very well. Go across that bottom there. And I only pull off one side because then I can kind of push it in the on the corner there and get one side set and then come back and pull off the other side. Of the tape. There. Okay. Then we're left with the long edges on the bottom. So I'll do this. Here. And again, just pull off one edge. Go off the accents everywhere. Turn it up, peel off the other side, and stick it down. And then one more. One more long edge. Oops. Okay, there. Okay, so this is our box. This is where our book is going to go down inside of. Then we have our black pieces that are the inside guides. These inside guides will actually stick up a little taller than what the box does itself. And what these are for is to make the lid close properly when we put the lid on. So I'm going to, by putting the black ones in, actually, and the ones we're going to, the way you put these in, you put in the two sides going to go in first. We're going to cover the edges, but I'll just do a skip thing first. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put this down just to make sure it's fit nice and snug, just like that. And then I'm going to put this one in, and it's going to go all the way to the bottom. Make sure they're flush down at the bottom. 
They should stick out about a quarter of an inch, just like that. A quarter of an inch. And then the same, and then the front and the back go in. And since they're so close in measurement, you've got to make sure you get them in the right direction. There we go. But I always, before I go doing t going any further, I always put these in and make sure that they're going to fit okay. The wrong way. Oh, nope, that was the right way. This is the way. There. So see, these, these black pieces all the way around will stick up a quarter of an inch. All the way around. And before we put them in for good, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to line the tops of these and the top of the brown so that you don't see the and if you choose to build it all in black that's fine i didn't mainly because bernard down mainly because it's so hard working black on black i wanted you to be able to see what was really taking place here okay so now i'm going to take some of my pieces and I'm going to go ahead and go around the top, cut these the length you need them. So I need two for the front, one front, one back. And then you should have some scraps over here that will work across the sides. Yep, there's my scraps for across the sides on both pieces, on even on the black ones. So first I'm going to take these and I'm going to go cut angles on these and angles on the side ones. Not much. Okay, so I'm going to take and put this on here first. And if they end up being a little too long, again, that's okay. You'll be able to turn them off. Then I'm going to put the other one on the other long side. And then I'm going to go across the end. See, we have them to where they're going to, and I'm going to cut angles, on, better angles on the inside section so that it covers better. But I won't do that until after I put all four pieces on. Because I really like my corners to be covered the best I can so you don't see any brown chipboard out there. Okay, so then I take, and you can see how this right here, if I can get it to show you. This actually comes over this piece of chipboard too much. And you'll know what I mean when you actually see your own. When, once you get yours on there, you'll see it. So you're just going to take and trim it just a little bit more at an angle so that it goes over and covers that. And it's not so much trimming back here. I'm going to get my finger in there and right back. It's not so much trimming back here, it's trimming out here so when you fold this, it doesn't bind on the on the side of the of the thing. So I'm just going to do this this way because this is what I would normally do. Bernard, go lay down. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now we'll see if I need to do any more. Okay, so then I'm just going to peel these off. And I do take them all off at once so I can work my way around the box. Okay. And you can start anywhere you want to start. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to bend this over. I usually bend it down and then run my bone folder across the top because if your score line isn't lined up by chance, you'll be able to make it crease. Okay, and then roll it, fold it down here, and run your bone folder in there again. 
You just want to make sure you're nice and flat and smooth, and you want to make sure you're not binding up anywhere. And then I turn it around the other way, and I'm going to do the other side. And I'm just going to push this down, lay it down, bone folder on the inside, do a real good crease job on it, and the same up here. Fold them over, make sure that the bone folder is down where it needs to be. And then the same over here. Now, see, I can see this one isn't right. This side needs to be trimmed a little bit more. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to come in that way. Leave it out here. Take it off in here so that when it folds, it folds down right. There you go. Just like that. That Then you have nice covered edges. And then when you put your paper on it and stuff and your decorations on it, you'll be able to... Um, You'll be able to have nice edges. It'll be black, matted black. It'll look really nice. Okay, so then we're going to take these pieces, which go in there, and we're just going to do the top edge. The bottoms doesn't have to be done because they're going to be stuck, glued down inside, so you're not even going to see them. So you only need to have one edge done, which would be the top edges. And on these, I do not cut angle from them because I don't want my edges to show. I want it to be straight across. And again, fold it over this way. Flatten them down the best you can because you really want it to be a square, a square piece. Okay, I'm going to run it up that way. Put it down and then I'm going to Take my bone folder there and then I'll go back with my scissors and I'll just trim off the edges of the cardstock so that they line up you don't have to worry about it okay so we want two of those it's gonna fit yeah okay And flat. Okay, so you got the two top edges on the small ones, and then make sure that you get the right edges. A lot of times what I'll do is because I know I'm going to end up usually screwing it up somehow. So I put my sides back in with the top sticking up. Put this one in. The top sticking up just to make sure. And then... That way I know exactly which way, because these are off. They're not square. Okay, so I want to do this top edge. This is the edge I want to do. So I'll put a pencil mark on there. And then make sure this one's the same way. And this is the edge I want to do. So I'll put pencil marks on them so that I know exactly which edge I want to do. And then this. And these. I'm going to leave just a hair sticking out like that so that I make sure that I don't cut them too short. I'm going to want two of those. Okay. So go find my pencil marks again, this edge. Okay, just so I can have them. the top with the bone folder, fold it down this way to get start the training process, and then peel off the, end, the other part and fold it down. There. And then I'll come back with my scissors right here there, and trim off the extra pieces. Yes, excess there. So that gives you a nice straight 
place there. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side. There's my. Okay. And when you start doing this, you'll realize that running your bone folder across the top like that really does give it a nice square look. Makes it look so nice when it's all finished up. There. And I will not. Now, if you choose to paper these, you can. I will not paper them. This is just the way it will look when it's all done, just like that. I will not paper the inside. That's why I do it with black. It looks nice. It looks clean. And it can be left that way. So, so that, that's how that will look. So that's the bottom part of the jukebox. Now for the lid. And this part always tells you whether you've made the bottom square or not. So we'll see how it comes out. It'll be interesting to see mine. Okay, so what I did for the top, you have two pieces that are eight and a half by four. What did I do with my piece of paper here? Okay, so I take and I cut an eight and a half by four piece of paper for my arch. And then because you want them, you know, you want both sides to match as good as you can, these pieces are three quarters of an inch, the side pieces. So I come in here and I mark, I just take this and I make myself a line. Just on one side, that's all you need. I fold this in half this way. And then I start cutting right here because you want this three quarters of an inch because that's where this is going to go on. So you want this three quarters of an inch here. You can't see it because of the light. So you want the, there's a line here that's three quarters of an inch. So I mark my line. And you're going to start cutting right there. And you're just going to round this however you want. You know, you can come up like this. And you can however much of a round you want to make on it. And if I cut them together, it'll be together. And I do have a couple points right here you can see. Right there and right there. So... You can come back and just kind of trim those off, or you can sand them off after you do it. Now, I've already cut mine, and I did mine kind of more than that. So let me, I want mine to, I rounded them more. And you can do, you know, again, you can do it however you want. So I'm going to trace this, because what you do with these tempers, once you cut your chipboard, so however you want it, you're going to use this piece as a template for your pattern paper. So don't throw it away like I did. Okay, so there. Now that matches my that matches my chipboard to a certain extent. Turn that off. Okay, so now it matches what I already cut. I don't know. I must have thrown my template away. I probably did because the stuff sat around for three months before I did anything with it. So, Okay, so now I have both my, my templates for the top, and I mark them outside and outside because when you put them together, I sanded mine. I want, to I want them to match. If I, they don't match, if you put, don't mark them, you can end up like this, and mine don't match. There's a little, it's a little bit bigger here. You can kind of see it there in the video. It's a little bit taller here, so I always put them together, and I mark outside and outside. So whether those end up being on the outside or whether they end up being on the inside, like this, your arch is going to be the same. So that is how you cut those. That's how you make your arch. Then we're going to take these pieces. Because these are these are the four inch pieces. These are actually going to come right over the top and put it go right in here. 
Okay, so these have to go on here this way. So again, we're going to put, this is going to go here, here, here. And the other one's going to go on either end, doesn't matter. And then we're going to connect them together. And then I'm going to measure the top of this to know how much of the arch, um, how much I need of this piece, and then I'll cut this piece to make it for the arch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to take some strips, and I just need to cut some three-quarter inch strips of these to go on there. And again, if you have any leftover pieces from another project, they come in here. This is where they come in handy at. So I'm going to do one, two, you need four of them. Oh, no, you need three, you need four, you need eight. Two, four, you need eight. Eight of them. Inside and outside. I'm not going to try to do that. Let's just... So now there's four, and then there's five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's our eight. So then we're going to take these. You can do it kind of whichever way you want. A pain in the butt to get them peeled off, though I can tell. If you want, you can just put them on the, on your little pieces. Makes it easier to do. Put one on each end of a little piece. Just make sure they're on the same side. Not that it matters, because you're going to use them on the inside anyway. I mean, you're going to do the other way as well. And then, see, I've got a little bit sticking out right here. So I'm going to take and trim this off that way. And I'm going to trim this off this way so that they're straight across. Okay, so there's that. And I need to do it again. So we're going to one, two, okay. Make sure they're cut straight. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to just line this up right here at the bottom. This way. And then on the other side of this one, I want this to line up this way. Okay. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to line this up this way at the bottom. So we have a nice long, you got an arch, a straight, an arch, a straight. And then this gets folded like this and gets attached to there. So then you end up with something that almost looks like a napkin holder. Okay. And when you fold it, I'm going to show you. So if I have... I have this one that's not attached out here. So if you have this one and one of these, you should be able to fold it at this one. Keep everything lined up straight at the bottom. And then this one should fold and meet right with it, and it does. Let me pull this off. Okay, so this is going to come, and it's right on the bottom. I line up all the way across the bottom. And then this one is there, too. Whoops, get on there. There. And everything lines up good. So there we have the bottom. And it will go on here like this. When it's all said and done. Come on, get on there. It's going to be tight, isn't it? Of course it's not because it wants to lift off of there now because there. So when it's all said and done... This is the way it's going to look. So there's your arch. 
we still have to put our little pieces across there. And I'm going to leave this on here when I do that because it will help hold it square for me. So I have these pieces. Again, I'm going to put some um, glossy accents inside there. And then I'm going to put these little guys on. So let's just I'm going to pull off one side on each one of these so they're ready to go. Two. Three, four. Okay. So I'm going to put some glossy accents on here. There, and we're just that's just what you're going to do. Put your glossy accents on there and then fold your paper over. Just be careful, don't get your glossy accents down here or you're going to glue it on there. And this one sticks, this one sticks up right there. That's okay. I'll go back and trim it off. I just want to use this to keep my, so that my lid fits good. Keeps it square. It makes it easier to, to put the stuff on. One more in this one. And then we're also going to put black across the bottom of this as well. Just like we did at the top here, all the way around the top edge, we're going to do it around the bottom of the of the top as well. There. Okay, so there's our lid, just like that. And I do need to trim. This one's got a little bit on it there. The rest of them are all okay, but this one here. And then this one needs to be trimmed up right there. And that's as far as it needs to go. It doesn't matter if it goes up here a little ways. Uh, let's see, how do I do this so you can see it? See, it sticks up here a little ways. I don't really care. That's fine. I just want this to be trimmed down so that when we put the top piece on, it's got a clean piece to adhere to. Okay, so let's put this here, the lid back on that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover this, these edges up with strips, and that's too, tall, too short. So that one will work. And two shorts. That one will work, so I'm going to need to cut two pieces for the long ones. Okay, so this. Two of these. All right. And these will have to have just a tiny bit of an angle on them. We're going to kind of do the same way we did inside the box, the top of the box. So I want this to go here. And this to go here. And 
then go on here. One more. Okay. So again, you have to make sure that that's going to be okay. So my ends are going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and get those, fold it over. And you have to really hold on to this because you don't want to, it's, it's going to be easy to tear because these are only three quarters of an inch. So really carefully hold when you go to do that. this out here. Put this down. Okay. Then I'm going to come across here. And they need to be trimmed. So. That one. Okay. this over and this needs to be done too. Okay, there. So then when you're done with this, and it might be a little bit more snug because you've got that layer of paper on, around the bottom, but it should go back on here. Okay, so today I've got something going on here. There, 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 there. There. Okay, so it should fit snug. That's the whole idea for it, is to fit snug so that it looks like there's your jukebox. This is going to be the front and then your sides. And your top has to go on there still. So, now what I do to figure out how much I need um, is I usually take a tape measure. I don't know how this one will work. We'll try this one and see. A lot of times I use one for like fabric so I can see. So I get my tape measure and I kind of wrap it this way so I can see right on the arch. This is a pretty stiff tape measure. This is too stiff. Let me find a thinner one. Let's try this one and see how this one will work. Yeah, this one's too thin, too thick, too. Um, anyway, a string, anything that you can start down here on the bottom and run across the top and down to the other side to give you a measurement is all you need, whether it be um, a piece of, um, what you call it, ribbon or anything that you can find. I usually will use, and I don't see it though, a fabric tape measure. 
one of those that bends real easy so that I know I could use a piece of this so this would work. Here, I'll use a piece of this elastic stuff because I can measure it when I'm done. So you want it to start at the right at the top here. You want it to start here and then you just want to follow it. And I have to be careful because this is elastic. I can't stretch it. And you're just going to follow your arch and all the way down to the other side. I'm actually going to cut this off so I know exactly how much I need there. Okay, so this is the piece that I need. Now that I made a mess of the elastic. Okay, well, I'm just going to put this back on it, shove it back in the drawer. Okay, so this is how big of a piece I need. So then take a ruler and lay this down on here, and it needs to be hmm, 11 and 3 quarter inches long. And then I'm going to just double check myself just because I feel the need to. Yep. Okay, and this measures 11 and 3 quarters. So I need 4 inches for here by 11 and 3 quarters. And make sure... The 11 and 3 quarters is this, this bends this way or it's not going to work. So let me get my cutter here, my rota trim. So I'm going to do 4 inches and then 11 and 3 quarters. 11 and 3 quarters is right there. Okay, so there's my piece for the top. This off the table. Okay. Okay, so here's my lid, and now this should bend. And, and you know, work it some. I I usually sit and bend it some so that it, it bends fairly easy. So this is going to go on here just like this. So it's going to start here and end over here. So to do that, we're going to take and put, oops, just threw my elastic away. I don't need to do that. We're going to take on the ends. And we need some pieces to go across the ends. Again, look in your scraps and see if you've got something. And you want to put it on, let me see, did I do it? I think I did them on the outside. And since I've already kind of got this bent, kind of trained it a little bit already, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the bend right here, the outside. See? See how it's, it's kind of trained already to arch that way, so I'm putting this on the outside, on both sides. I'm also going to put pieces on the inside because it'll be easier to do it now than it will be once I get it. Always, always take and burnish down your stuff because the score tape holds a lot better when it's burnished down. Okay, and I do want to go ahead and put pieces here. I really don't want to cut. That might, do I have anything? That one works. Probably not. Okay, these are all too short. So, there's another one. It's too short. So I'll take my shortest one and duplicate and cut this one again. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stick, peel off part of it, and stick it down right up against that edge on the inside as well. Then you end up with a sandwich piece, like a piece of bread. Got top and bottom. Covered. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece here. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. Okay. That's off of here. So this is going to come down and go right on there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the outside to this and the inside to this. It's just going to come straight down. I don't know that I can actually show you. Well, I can. This is just going to sit right on top of that piece of chipboard right there. It's going to sit right on top of there. But you know what? I think what we ought to do before we do that is we need to go ahead and put a piece across here. So we need this to be like your 11 and 3 quarters. Two pieces on the outside. So that when we get them, and again, I'm not going to angle these. I'm going to just leave them straight. There. Do it on the other side too. It's just this big. Okay. Do it on the other side too. So this will be your outside. it's going to go. So then I'm going to stick it on here. I'm going to make sure this these pieces I got on the outside edges are on the outside and I'm going to stick this down on here this way. So I'm going to peel this piece here across the bottom. I'm going to line these up so that they're straight across the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and Stick this down, flush on top, so it's straight on top of there. It lines up right across, so let's see how do I do this, right there, so that this piece, this is the top piece that comes down and it butts right up against this piece here, right up against the bottom, that bottom three quarters of an inch piece that we put on there. Okay, and then I'm going to peel off. I can get a hold of it, peel that off, and flip that down. So there, so you have tape on both sides, there and there, and it's all it's all down. Because we're going to wrap it across the top like this, and we're going to come down on the other side and do the exact same thing with it. That's the importance of making sure that your chipboard bends the right way, because this is going to come right down here, and it's going to go right on top of it like that and stick down again just like that see there's your there's your top for your jukebox okay so i'm going to go ahead and peel off the outside piece first and this is going to be probably hard for me to do in camera i'm going to try the best i can there that should be sitting on top of there good looks like it is uh, trying to burnish it down real good and actually it wouldn't hurt if you well before you did that you could have put the glossy accents inside there and it probably wouldn't have hurt it any okay there so see now we have this is our top and this is our arch that's going to go on the box so what we're going to do here is we're going to peel off the, the tape backing it makes it so much easier if you peel off the backing first. Otherwise, you're peeling off a whole bunch of little tiny pieces. Let's see. There we go. 
Okay, and this is going to fold down, but what we're going to do before we fold it down is we're going to take and cut every, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. And just make a straight snip. Like that. Okay, and then we're, you're just, I hold it because I want, I want this in here to be up against there. And so I hold it and, and push those down. I just put my hand inside there to make sure that there's something to hold it, to give it support. Like that. And you can see you have your little lines there. But when you go to put your paper over it, you'll be okay. And then this is pushed up against itself. See how there's there's no gap in there? Because we'll take glossy accents and we'll run it up in there as well. So I just make sure that it's down. And this is why I say pull off that paper backing first. Otherwise, you're pulling off each individual little piece. There. I'm just going to kind of push that down while it's up against the, the mat, my table, and peel off the other side and do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Just go ahead and cut your little slits. And then push it down, and then again, hold this down, and just start working them over. Put your hand under there for pressure. to go ahead and, you know, burnish it down. So there you go. Now, for in here, what we're going to do, now that was 11 and a quarter we put out here. Because this, we're going to basically do the same thing. It's going to go from there around. And what I do is I, I, um, you can see there's the edge. Put that up against there. Just run that around there like that. And you can see that it's, you're probably cutting off more like a half an inch. And then I put this here. And I snip it off. Now, if you wanted to, you could center that. And just make it go all the way like this. But I don't. So it's really up to you. However you want to do that. I make it start at this piece right here, right at the fold, and then make sure it's down so that you, and then I just make a little snip. So there's my mark right there. I'm going to cut that off, and I need to do that to two pieces, one for each side. Okay. And these kind of go in the same way. We will take and put, um, trying to remember how I did, oh, okay. We're going to fold backwards so it goes this way. And you're going to start it and you're going to, I guess the best thing to do is just for me to show you. It's kind of hard to, I just hope I can do it in the camera. So I'm going to take glossy accents and I'm going to go ahead. And put it right up against both pieces, right in that joint. And then I'm going to do it over here, too.
can see down there I didn't get it quite. And if you want, it's a good place. And I'm going to stop because my um, I'm going to run out of time here in just a minute. So I'm, I'm going to pick it up again when I put those on. I'm going to let this sit a little bit and kind of dry so that it gets a good hold on it. So I'm going to stop the recording and I will continue in just a couple minutes.